so welcome one and all. <laughs> um, and if, uh, if you're worshiping with us online, we just ask you to, uh, you can find the bulletin on our website, which is at stephenlc.org. There you can, of course, find all of the upcoming events, bulletins, and links to worship and events. Today is May 9th, the sixth Sunday of Easter, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. We want to thank our many worship assistants who make worship possible. So our AV team today is Tom, Wayne, and Bill. Our Zoom host is Jen. Our lector is Lloyd. Our assisting minister is Stacy. Mike is our cantor. Abby is our organist. Our usher is Daryl. Our altar guild today, Sue Rogers. And our Facebook host is Nicole Grove. And uh, just a couple of other announcements. As usual, for those of you who are online, you're welcome to put uh, prayers in the chat section, or if you're on Facebook, you can put prayers in the, in the uh, comment section. And if you're in person, again, I'll, I'll uh, make space for you to, um, to raise up a prayer during the, the prayers of the congregation. During the sharing of the peace, uh, those of you in person, you'll notice in the back that you'll be able to see people when you turn to the back. You can actually see folks now. We have a wonderful screen in the back um, it, that allows us to do multiple different things, so we're pretty excited about that. And thank you for, uh, to Tom to really kind of coordinate that and get that all taken care of. Um, if you're online, we will be, uh, you're welcome to participate with communion, of course. Provide your own uh, bread and either wine or grape juice. And of course, here in person, uh, we have the communion packets. Um, just make sure if you're using the, uh, the wine communion packets that you don't open both sides because you'll get a mess, right? So just be careful with those. And we will be uh, partaking of communion after we sing the Lamb of God. And as we gather, I invite you to say with me the mission that Jesus has for our community of faith. It is right on the top of the front page of our bulletin. So let's say it together. We respond to Christ's love by feeding those who hunger in body, mind, and spirit. And let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we live into this mission we are called to and as we listen to our prelude.
I invite those in person to please rise as you're able. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to a thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your peace people when we hide in fear. Clothe us in your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with our gathering hymn, which is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. I invite those who are in person to be seated. those in person to please rise as you're able. The boundless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, and the light of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above. And for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church, 
church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Oh, 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 <laughs> Glory to God. He in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Glory to God in the In the glory of God, the Father, glory to God in the highest. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we hear our readings. first lesson is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the 10th chapter. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. 
And then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The second lesson is a reading from St. John's first letter, the fifth chapter. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. from the Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything I, and I have heard from the Father. You, do not, you did not choose me, but I chose you 
and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. been a while since I've been down here without a manuscript. We'll see how it goes. So if you're on any type of social media at all, then you've probably gotten friend requests from folks that you don't know. It happens uh, this past week. I got, I don't know, like three or four friend requests from people that I literally have no idea who they are, how they found me, Um, and two of them were, um, based on their pictures, were seeking a probably a special kind of friendship. (laughs) Easy to delete, right? But one gentleman uh, reached out to me through, through Messenger on Facebook, so did not friend me, but reached out through messenger and uh, this is this is what he wrote uh, his name was John and I'll withhold his last name because I really don't know who he is uh, hello how are you doing today seems legitimate okay I responded I'm well thank you and you and then he said I'm 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 pretty doing great and extremely happy this moment Just wondering whether you have heard about my breakthrough yet. Oh boy, here we go. No, I haven't. I'm just waiting, giving him the benefit of the doubt, hoping that it's not going where I think it is, but here we go. Have you heard the news about the ongoing American Hope Resources, AHR? This program is placed for those who need assistance in paying bills, buying a home, starting their own business, or even helping raise their children with old, retired people and disabled. Okay. That's what friend has become on social media, unfortunately. That is a scam, of course, right? We all know that, right? That is a scam. And unfortunately, that has diminished what friend means, right? What, what is friend? How do we define that? How, what is a friend? What, what, do you, what do you all think? What's a friend? And you can type it in, if you're online, you can type in what you think a friend is also. I, I'm right here, I can see. What's that? Someone that you trust, okay. Somebody that you have something in common with. Go ahead, Sharon. What is it? A friend loves you and accepts you for who you are. Someone who loves unconditionally. Someone you can count on. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, those are all great definitions of what a friend is, right? And when we take a look at our scripture today, our gospel lesson, and I really want you to think about this not as a reading Right? Think of the context of what's going on here. This is Jesus at the Last Supper. The Gospel of John has three chapters that is all Jesus speaking because John's version of Jesus is like Jesus going on and on and on forever. Um, but he's speaking. This is the farewell address that he has with his disciples who he just called friends. Right? So this is his farewell address to them. He knows what's going to happen in a matter of hours. And I just want to highlight, especially where it starts, verse 12. This is where Jesus says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends. The Greek word for friend there is philon, 
or a variation of it. And so you can think about this term is similar to some of the words that, that you were describing, right? A good, a good translation of this is confidant. So a confidant is somebody that is very deeply trusted, right? This is, this, is, this is an intimate relationship, not a sexual intimate relationship, but an intimate relationship with someone that you can dearly trust. This is what Jesus is saying about the disciples. This is what Jesus is calling on us to be, right? And, you know, friendship has a wide variety of uh, connotations, right? We have one word for friend, and then we have to usually put some uh, descriptors on what kind of a friend. There's, you know, work friends, there's neighbor friends, there's close friends, best friends, there's acquaintances, all those type of things, and, and then it gets more complicated when we're either introverted or extroverted or somewhere on that, right? Introverts generally have, you know, you can count friends on one hand and then a whole lot of acquaintances, right? And extroverted friends, everybody is their friend, right? I mean, it's just kind of, it's just, you know, humanity is beautiful that way, the variety that happens, right? So friendship is, is a wide variety uh, of things there, right? But this, this idea here that Jesus is talking about is this deep personal relationship of what friendship is, right? That phrase in there, no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. There have been people in history who have taken that very literally. I, when I was uh, preparing for the sermon, the first person that came to mind was Maximilian Kolbe. He's a, a Catholic saint. He was a, he was a Franciscan who uh, was Polish, and he was alive um, before World War II and then into World War II. He was arrested by the Nazis after they had conquered Poland for the crime of distributing literature. Um, and he was sent to Auschwitz, the death camp. And while he was there, and this was in 1941, so pretty early on in, uh, in the war, uh, there was an escape from a prisoner at Auschwitz, something that didn't happen very often. Part of the reason why it didn't happen very often is what the Nazis would do as a result when they had learned about an escape, which is they would take 10 random prisoners and they would sentence them to death in response to someone escaping. And so if you were a prisoner there, you knew that if you escaped, 10 people would die. It's a pretty high deterrent from folks. So what had happened is those 10 people were there, and, and Maximilian Kolbe, when he was there, so he's a Catholic priest, he had been saying mass with people kind of in hidden places, and he was pastoring to people, right? All these, these type of things that go on. And uh, he got to know these folks. And of course, you know, none of us can imagine what it's like to be in a, in a concentration camp, but I imagine the folks that you get to know, you get to know really well. And one of the gentlemen who uh, the, uh, the, the guards picked was this guy who had a family. And so Maximilian Colby went to the commandant and begged and pleaded to take his place. He took the place of the other man, knowing what would happen to him. And it wasn't going to be by uh, hanging or firing squad. They were going to be starved to death, which is terrible. And so the commandant agreed, replaced the one man with Maximilian Kolbe, who was then put, they were each put in their own cells and left there. And every day, the guards would come and check on them to see if they were dead yet. And after two weeks, he was still alive, amazingly. But he was so emaciated that the guards couldn't stand to look at him. And so to move things along, they injected him with phenol, which is an addictive and deadly drug, to help kill him off. There's a reason why uh, John Paul II, the pope at when uh, who canonized him said that Maximilian Kolbe was the patron saint for a difficult century. It was a 
good reason for that, right? Now, that's one example. That's a pretty extreme example, right? I mean, how many of you are going to sign up for that? No one? I'm shocked. Really? No. Of course not, right? Gosh. And of course, we don't know what we would do in, in that situation, right? None of us would look forward to that at all. It takes a really special person to do something like that. It's a special gift from God to do something like that. So what do we make of this when we hear no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends? Does that make us bad Christians if we're not willing to do that? I don't think so. There's a, a question that I was struck by this week as part of my uh, preparation. It just caught my attention. The question was, what does it take to set aside or lay down all that one believes about others in order to join them in being truly the body of Christ. It's another way of taking a look at this verse here. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. What does it take to set aside, to lay down a part of your life? Right. This is a different way of looking at this passage that you don't have to read it literally. You can read it in a lot of different ways. What do we need to set aside in this life in order to be part of the body of Christ? Well, we set aside a lot of different things. Other people have set aside a lot of things for us, right? Today is Mother's Day, and not everyone has had wonderful mothers. That's just the reality. So let's just talk about the ideal of motherhood. Mothers set aside a whole lot of things, or they're supposed to, for their families, right? So I'm sure you can think of examples of that. We set aside time for folks that we care about, right? We set aside a lot of times for, for folks that we care about. We set aside money. You've got a dear and close friend, and they're in a pinch. You're going to help them out what you do, right? Because people have done that for you as well. You set aside, you know, the beautiful thing, all the things that you all were saying earlier. One of the things that I don't think ever gets mentioned is we set aside worrying about being right with those we deeply care about. It's not about whether we're right and somebody's wrong. It's about the relationship. It's about caring about that person, which means we set aside that desire to be right. All those type of things. So my question for you is, where have you seen someone laying aside things in their life for their friends? Where have you seen it? I want you to take two minutes, if you're near someone, to just share. Where have you seen someone set aside things in their life out of friendship, true friendship, that philon friendship that Jesus talks about. Turn to somebody. And if you're online, if you're with somebody, you're, you're welcome to do this. And also you can type in um, some, uh, some things in the chat section. So just take like two minutes really quick to somebody around you. I know we haven't done this in a while.
All right, let's come back. So I'm sure that you were able to share several different things. The, the beauty about this is so often we're surrounded by such bad news, right? We get all sorts of bad news. We're inundated with it and all these type of things. What you've done is you have shared good news with someone. You have shared the gospel, right? Because I will tell you how I have seen it recently, how I have seen this people setting aside parts of their life for those they care about. We see it in nurses and doctors, especially during this pandemic. Some of them literally setting aside their life for those that they're caring about, right? The time, the energy, the emotion that they set aside for someone else. It, if, uh, it was brought to my attention yesterday that the Sentinel did an insert on, on nurses. And one of them uh, you will recognize as a part of our congregation. Beautiful, beautiful. If you get a chance, read those and look through the lens of what they set aside. So Christ-like. We, over this past year, teachers have been setting aside a whole lot of things to teach their students. They care about them. They're not just students. They're people they care about and their families. They care about them and they have set aside so much. I saw it on Thursday out of the pavilion. When we do our pavilion ministry, we set aside so many different things, time, energy. We hear stories. We share our lives together. That happened also when we were at the truck stop as well. We, it, I remember seeing it when we, we were doing uh, dinner with friends, and I hope to be able to do that again. We share stories. What do we set aside? We set aside what our beliefs about different things are, and we get to hear about folks. We know that there are certain folks who are battling cancer and have had heart trouble. We keep them in our prayers and our thoughts. We see it. I have seen it. I have a, a friend who works with a lot of different folks, and she has set aside so much to help people, to be there with them, to see the image of God in others. And she's an atheist. She calls herself an atheist, but she's so Christ-like, she doesn't even realize it. We see it in a lot of different ways. I just want to go back and, and again ask this question, what does it take to set aside all that one believes about others in order to join them in being truly the body of Christ. All these examples, really what they are, they're encounters with Jesus. I mentioned that it's the sharing of the good news. We encounter Jesus when we share these stories. We see Jesus in others, right? Jesus didn't just come 2,000 years ago, hang out for a while, get killed, and then rise up, and, uh, and then we don't hear, from, you know, he's asleep or something, hanging out or playing poker up there with, with the Father and the Holy Spirit or anything like that, right? I, uh, sometimes our creed is misleading. If you read our creed, it's, this is what God did, 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 in the past, in the past, in the past, in the past. And what is, what is Jesus doing right now, according to our creed? sitting at the right hand of God. Is it time yet? Is it time yet? Just sitting. No. Jesus is alive and active. Jesus wouldn't say, and that's not to dismiss the creed, it's to say the creed doesn't have everything. Right? It's to say, that when Jesus talks about no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends, that that continues to go on. It's not just Jesus who not only said it and then would live it out in a couple of hours after he said it, but it's a call to us, right? Because at the end of this, it says, you, I, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Jesus says that to all of us. Jesus chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Every time we have one of these encounters, it is fruit that lasts. It is fruit. Think about when you just heard from somebody else or you thought about it yourself, 
how you were fed. Good fruit feeds you and continues to feed you, and it is fruit that lasts. And so I challenge you this week, be on the lookout for fruit that lasts. Be on the lookout for how people lay down their lives for others and share those stories with others. Be on the lookout of how others are setting aside things in their life for you and how you are doing this for others. Be on the lookout and share those things because we need to hear them. We desperately need to hear them. They are good news and we all need good news. Thanks be to God. We will continue by listening to Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love, as it's printed in the bulletin. Yezu, Yezu. Fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are wealthy and poor, varied in color and race. Neighbors are near us and far away. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we will serve. These are the ones we will love. All these are neighbors to us and you. Yezu, Yezu, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and truly became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Today, we pray for the Moravian Church, giving thanks for the life and witness of Nicholas Ludwig von Ziesendorf, renewer of the church and hymn writer, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. 
Fill the earth with your love, so that by their song, all creatures of land and sea and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join with them in praise. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, Savior, you conquer the world, not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit, so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering. Provide for those needing homes or medical care and point us towards life-changing responses to these needs in our own communities. Be with the dying. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Gentle Redeemer, all who die in you abide in your presence forever. We remember with thanksgiving those who have shared your love throughout their lives. Keep us united with them in your lasting love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. I invite those who are present in the sanctuary to lift up their prayers that they have at this time. We pray for Jen Batchelor as she gets over her second vaccination symptoms. We continue to uphold John Stover, one of our Dinner with Friends diners, who continues to struggle with diabetic health problems and resultant financial issues. Please continue prayers for Garrett Brown, the 14-year-old for whom we prayed two weeks ago, who continues to be in treatment for osteosarcoma. We pray that peace may prevail in Ukraine. We pray for an end to systemic racism. Let us abide in your love. We pray for the families and communities of those affected by gun violence this week. We especially pray for the families of the three people who died and the 33 who were injured since last Sunday. And we lift up the communities of St. Paul, Minnesota, Chicago, Illinois, Baltimore, Maryland, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Columbus, Ohio, Saginaw, Michigan, Patterson, New Jersey. We pray for an end to this violence, that our society may be transformed by your abiding love. And I'll offer a special prayer, something that I offered two years ago, on the wide spectrum of mothering. To those who give birth this year to their first child, we celebrate you. To those who lost a child this year, we mourn you. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stains, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, and run away, we mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment, we walk with you. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make this harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms, we need you. To those who have warm and close relationships with their children, we celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children, we sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year, we grieve with you. To those who experience abuse at the hands of of your own mother, we acknowledge your experience. To those who live through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood, we are better for having you in our midst. To those who have aborted children, we remember them and you on this day. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children, we mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed it to be. 
To those who step-parent, we walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envision lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be, we grieve with you. To those who have emptier nests in the upcoming years, we grieve and rejoice with you. To those who place children up for adoption, we commend you for your selflessness and remember how you hold that child in your heart. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising, we anticipate with you. This Mother's Day, we walk with you. Mothering is not for the faint of heart, and we have real warriors in our midst, and we remember you, and we thank, thank God for you. This is a message by Amy Young. Hear us, O oh God, and your mercy is great. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm sorry, that was the offering prayer. I'm jumping ahead. It's all right. We'll just adjust, right? The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us show a sign of that peace from where we are and remember to turn back and show a sign of peace to the folks that are worshiping with us online. The instructions for the offering are in the bulletin, and we thank you for your generosity. It allows us to continue to do all of the many ministries that go on in this congregation. There are so many different ways that happens. One of the neat things that has been going on that starts this weekend, uh, this, this past uh, yesterday, was that we started our Synod Assembly season, so our connection with the larger church that we support because we know that we can't do it all ourselves. We are not an island. We are combined and connected to the larger church. And yesterday was one of our edification days. And it was great to see so many folks um, to be online with people, to have communication, to worship together, to reflect on how God is active. This is one of the ways in which we support each other as a church. So we thank you for your generosity. And I invite you as, um, if you're online, to set your own table, some bread and some wine or grape juice, enough to be consumed in one time. And if anything is left over, please either consume it right away after worship or you can be returned back to the ground because that's the appropriate way actually to dispose of any leftover. Those in person, I invite you to at least pull open the top of the um, of your communion packet, whether it is uh, the wine or the grape juice, so that the bread uh, can be exposed. If you have the grape juice, you can also pull open the uh, the next layer. Uh, you'll have to wait if you're uh, using the wine to because you got to flip it over. And please rise as you are able. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all its creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all the nations. I invite you to hold up your element of bread. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I invite you to hold up your cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, let us eat and be satisfied. consume the elements. Please rise as you're able. Let us pray. 
wellspring of joy. Through this meal, you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Those in the sanctuary may be seated as we hear our sending Him. Abide, O dearest Jesus, as it's printed in the bulletin. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You, yes you, you are the body of Christ. Raise up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news, all those encounters with Jesus. Thanks be to God. We will.